Chapter 17 Attributes, Signs, and Tokens of Irreversibility Various Tokens of Irreversibility Subuti What allured are any attributes, tokens, and signs of an irreversible bodhisattva? And how do we know any bodhisattva is, is, is irreversible? The Lord This level of we common people, this level of we disciples, this level of we pratyeka buddhas, this level of we buddhas, these levels, and we are all called the level of suchness. Thought as well, all these are suchness, not two, nor anyone divided, neither discriminated against, nor undiscriminated between. A bodhisattva is revealed as within suchness, and not other than this nature of dharma. Realizing one's firm stance as suchness, one neither imagines nor discriminates in this. With this sense awakened is one revealed thus. Once this is realized, even if one goes away from this assembly, because one's hearing is also suchness, one does not and cannot in any circumstance hesitate, does not and cannot become perplexed, does not and cannot doubt, and one is not stupefied by thought concerning any or all form, feeling, perceptions, impulses, or consciousness, as it is not thus. On the contrary, one is firmly aware as it is just thus, just suchness, and with this, one realizes one's being as such. Just so, one does not prattle away about everything which comes into one's head. Such a one only speaks if this is considered beneficial for another, and not if this may not. One does not look in final judgment on what others do or don't do. Endowed with such attributes, tokens and indications of suchness, a bodhisattva may be born in mind as irreversible from full enlightenment. An irreversible bodhisattva cannot pander to shramanas or brahmins of other schools, telling these what anyone knows is worth knowing, or what anyone sees is worth seeing. A bodhisattva pays no homage to strange gods, offers these no flowers, incenses, etc., and cannot put one's trust in these. A bodhisattva is no more reborn in places of woe, nor does one ever again become a different sex. As well, Sabuti, an irreversible bodhisattva undertakes to observe the ten avenues or ways of wholesome action. One observes, as one instigates others to observe, abstention from taking life, abstention from taking what is not given, abstention from wrong conduct as regards sensuous pleasures, abstention from intoxicants as tending to cloud the mind, abstention from lying speech, abstention from malicious speech, abstention from harsh speech, abstention from indistinct prattling, abstention from covetousness, abstention from ill will, abstention from wrong views. It is true an irreversible bodhisattva observes these ten ways of wholesome action and instigates any others to observe these, incites and encourages these to do so, establishes and confirms others in these. Even in bodhisattva dreams, one never commits offenses against these ten precepts, and one does not build on such offenses in one's mind. Even in one's dreams, an irreversible bodhisattva keeps the ten wholesome paths of action present in mind. Also, an irreversible bodhisattva masters a text of dharma and offers this to others. In mind, one builds upon the welfare and happiness of all beings as such, and one offers this gift of dharma in common to all beings, with no distinction. What's more, as deep dharmas are taught, a bodhisattva is not hesitant, is not perplexed, is not doubtful, is not stupefied. One only says what is beneficial, speaks gently, and in moderation. One exhibits little sloth and torpor, and loses all latent biases to evil. Whether one goes out or comes back, this mind does not wander, but one's mindfulness is fixed. As one steps on this ground, one knows what one does, and as one lifts up and puts down one's feet, one neither loiters nor hurries, but remains at ease. A bodhisattva's robe is free from lice. One's habits are clean, one is rarely ill, and afflictions are few. In one's body, these 80,000 families of worms which are present in the bodies of other beings cannot at all develop, as these are wholesome roots ensure one's place within this whole world. And as these wholesome roots, such as these go on increasing, in due course, one gains perfect purity of body, speech, and thought. Sabuti. What is known as perfect purity of thought on the part of a bodhisattva? The Lord. As these wholesome roots go on increasing, in due course one gains a state of mind in which one develops few cares, and is free from treachery, deceit, crookedness, and craftiness. 
In addition, this perfect purity of thought also consists in transcending through and beyond levels of Shravaka disciples and Pratyeka Buddhas, while yet facing these, and being in perfect accord with any such ways, still just as intent on mutuality and benevolence. And what's more, an irreversible bodhisattva is not one to attach exclusivity to gain, honor, or fame, or to robes, alms bowl, lodging, or medicinal appliances for use in sickness. This is not one who is full of envy and meanness. And, as profound dharmas are revealed, one does not lose heart, but intelligence grows steady, and one's intelligence runs deep. With respect, one hears dharma from others, ever with a view to learn. All these dharmas one hears, from others are united as perfection of wisdom, and also all worldly arts and professions one unites, thanks to this perfection of wisdom, as this very nature of dharma. Here is no dharma which one does not see as yoked to the nature of dharmas, and each dharma one sees is simply engaged in this effort. Mara's Deeds So now, Mara the evil one, only thought of as being, the one conjuring up visions of the eight great hells with many hundreds, many thousands, many hundreds of thousands of bodhisattvas in these. And he says to an irreversible bodhisattva, These bodhisattvas, described by the Tathagata as irreversible, are reborn in these great hells. Just so you also, since you are described as irreversible, fall into these great hells. Confess this. This thought of enlightenment is an error. What is Buddhahood to you? Abandon it. In this way, you avoid rebirth in the hells. As you act thus, you are one who goes to heaven. As the mind of the Bodhisattva does not waver, is not put out, is certain in one's knowledge an irreversible Bodhisattva, cannot possibly be reborn against one's will in the hells. This is another token of his irreversibility. Even so, Mara the evil one is seen as coming along, possibly in the guise of a Shramana, and saying, Give up what you hear to now. Abandon what you gain so far. As you follow this advice, we again and again approach you and say to you, What you hear now is not the word of a Buddha. It is poetry, the work of poets. But what I hear and teach to you, this is the teaching of a Buddha. This is the word of a Buddha. Upon hearing this, as any Bodhisattva wavers and is put out, one can know, such is not predicted by the Tathagata, this one is not fixed on full enlightenment and this one does not stand firmly in this element of irreversibility. But again, even as one hears these words of Mara, one does not waver, but remains as this nature of Dharma, to non-production, to non-stopping, to the unaffected. This is not one of these who puts their trust in others. An Arhat, a monk who has outflows dried up, does not go by what is said by merely someone else whom one trusts in, but has placed the nature of Dharma directly before one's own eyes, before or beyond, any one or anything whatsoever, and Mata is seen as having no access to one such as this. Just so, any irreversible bodhisattva can neither be crushed nor inflated by beings belonging to the vehicle of Shravaka disciples and Pratyeka Buddhas, and one cannot, by this very nature, backslide into the level of disciples or Pratyeka Buddhas, as any such as this are fixed on all knowledge, and end up in perfect enlightenment. It is quite certain any bodhisattva who stands firmly in the element of irreversibility cannot possibly be led astray by others. So, someone may come to the irreversible bodhisattva and say, A journey in birth and death is this coursing in perfection of wisdom, and not a journey of someone who is in the quest of enlightenment. If you put an end to all suffering in this very life, you no longer experience all the sufferings and disappointments which are bound up with this plane of birth and death. I surely, in this very life already, this personality of yours is finished. So why do you think of taking upon yourself another one, for the benefit of other beings? Even now, the Bodhisattva neither waves nor is put out. Even as Mara himself appears to say to this one, Just look at these Bodhisattvas, for which countless eons present the necessities of life to Buddhas and lords, which lead holy lives in the presence of countless Buddhas, which honor countless Buddhas and lords, and question these about just this vehicle of the bodhisattvas. Ask these how a bodhisattva should stand, hear the answer of the Tathagatas and act on it. In spite of the fact these stand, coarse and exert as they do, this very day these do not yet know full enlightenment. These stand firm in instruction, train themselves like this, but do not reach all knowledge. 
How do you reach full enlightenment ever? Even as one does not waver and is not put out, then Mara, the evil one, seems to conjure up some monks in this place and say, These monks are our hats with our flows dried up. These who set out for enlightenment in the meantime have reached our hatship and are established on it. How do you ever reach full enlightenment? It is quite certain any bodhisattva must be irreversible from full enlightenment, for as this is being said and expounded, one's mind does not waver and is not put out. As this mind of a bodhisattva which hears from a stranger these discouraging remarks still does not become excluded from the true nature of dharma, and one does not go back on it, as one does not change one's mind, as one recognizes these deeds of Mata as appearing for exactly what these are, it is quite impossible for one which courses correctly in these perfections not to reach all knowledge. Mata, the evil one, cannot possibly gain entry to a bodhisattva which not only courses but also trains oneself correctly, which does not lack in these practices described by Tathagatas, which is completely adjusted to this mental activity, which is associated with these perfections. As any bodhisattva recognizes these deeds of Mata, as one hears discouraging remarks from strangers, one does not desist nor slide back, nor change one's mind. And one perceives these seeds of Mara for exactly what these are. This is another token of irreversibility. So now an irreversible bodhisattva does not piece together a perception of skandhas, form, feeling, perception, impulses, or consciousness, nor produce one. As the irreversible bodhisattva, which through dharmas empty of their own marks, definitely entered on this certainty of salvation, as a bodhisattva does not apprehend even this dharma which we now behold in any moments, so this one cannot piece it together or produce it. One says here, a bodhisattva is irreversible as one patiently accepts the cognition of non-production. This is another token of irreversibility. What's more, Mata the evil one comes along in the guise of a monk and tries to deter the bodhisattva with the words, The same as space is this all-knowledge. It is a dharma which is not. It is non-existent. Who can anoint oneself with such as this? Who fully knows it? Here is no one who goes forth to such, and here is no one who can fully know such. Nothing can be fully known. Here is no one who understands. Here is nothing which can be understood. Due to this fact that at all times these dharmas are the same as space, it is useless to resist. Revealed and seen as the deed of Mata is this doctrine which, one knows full enlightenment, is not a Buddhist teaching. A son of daughter of good family now cognizes, realizes, and knows this kind of critical examination is seen as just a deed of Mara. After one makes this reflection, one makes one's mind firm, unshakable, irresistible. This is another token of irreversibility. More tokens of irreversibility. So now an irreversible bodhisattva is one inquiring even beyond and transcending any level of disciples and pratyeka buddhas and proceeding in a direction toward all knowledge. According to plan, one comes first, second, third, and fourth trance stages, and dwells with an absorption in these four trances. One realizes complete mastery over these trances, meaning one enters into trances, but a future rebirth is not determined by their influence. It is on dharmas of the sphere of sense-desire one bases one's rebirth. This is also known as a mark of irreversibility in irreversible bodhisattvas. Also, an irreversible bodhisattva does not attach weight to any name, nor to renown, title, or fame. One does not get attached to any particular name, which in any case is absent in emptiness. One's mind remains undismayed and interested only in the welfare of all beings. Whether one goes out or comes back, one's mind does not wander, and one remains ever mindful. When one lives the life of a householder, one has no great love for pleasant things, and one does not want these too much, for it is realized that it's with fear and disgust one possesses all pleasant things. Fear of the possessed items lost, and disgust at their decrepitude or lacking being better than what it is. Situated in a wilderness infested with robbers, one would eat one's meals in fear, and with the constant thought of getting away or getting out of this wilderness, and not without repose. Just so, an irreversible bodhisattva, living the life of a householder, possesses pleasant things simply without caring too much for them, without eagerness, without attachment. One is not one of these people who care for dear and pleasant forms. 
These who live the lives of householders, and who are involved in the five kinds of sensuous pleasures, do not earn their living in an irregular way, but in the right way. Neither do these incur death in a state of sin, nor do these inflict injuries on others. These incite all beings to realize this supreme happiness. These worthy beings, these great beings, super beings, excellent beings, splendid beings, powerful beings, sublime beings, valiant beings, heroes of beings, leaders of beings, water lilies of beings, lotuses of beings, thoroughbred beings, nagas of beings, lions of beings, trainers of beings. It is in the spirit which bodhisattva live the life of householders, inasmuch as these are impregnated with the power of perfection of wisdom, and this is another token of their irreversibility. So now, Vajrapani, the great yaksha, constantly follows behind the irreversible bodhisattva. Unassailable, the bodhisattva cannot be defeated by either men or ghosts. All beings find it hard to conquer one, and one's mind is not disturbed by their attacks. One's faculties are all complete, and one is not deficient in any of these. One possesses the organs of a virile being, not of those of an impotent being. One does not in any way embark on these spells, mutterings, herbs, magical formula, medical incantations, etc., which are the work of beings. One earns one's livelihood in a clean way, not in a wrong way. One's character is neither quarrelsome nor disputatious. One's views are upright. One does not exalt oneself nor deprecate others. With these and other similar qualities, this one is endowed. Such as these do not predict to women or men these will have a son or daughter. Such faulty ways of making oneself acceptable will not be this one's. All this is another token of irreversibility. So now, Zabuti, I'll indicate the attributes, tokens, and signs of an irreversible bodhisattva. Endowed with these, one is known as irreversible from full enlightenment. Again, which are these? The following. One does not give oneself over to occupation and preoccupation with the skandhas, the sense fields, the elements, and with conditioned co-production. One is not preoccupied with the kind of talk a person is fond of in society, with talk about kings and robbers, about armies and battles, about villages, cities, market towns, countries, kingdoms, and capitals, about oneself, about ministers and prime ministers, about women, men, and neuters, about journeys, parks, monasteries, palaces, pools, lakes, ponds, lotus ponds, woods, gardens, and mountains, about yakshas, rakshasas, pretas, pishakas, kataputana demons, and kumbanda demons, about food, drink, dresses, ornaments, perfumes, garlands, and ointments, about roads, crossroads, streets, markets, palanquins, and about people, about songs, dances, tales, actors, dancers, and wandering singers, about the ocean, about rivers, about islands. These do not devote themselves to talk which obstructs dharma, to the kind of talk which delights the common people, but to talk on perfection of wisdom. And these are people who do not lack in mental activities, which are associated with all knowledge, but talk about fightings and strife, about quarrels and disputes these avoid. These are willing for what is right, and not willing for what is wrong. These praise without causing dissension, and not in order to cause dissension. These want friendship, and not its opposite. These speak dharma, and not its opposite. These plan to gain a vision of the Thagatas which dwell in other world systems, and thus these increasingly produce thoughts which lead to their presence. According to plan, these are come near them, and so these do not lack in the vision of the Thagatas, nor in opportunities for honoring and serving them. Furthermore, as an irreversible bodhisattva definitely terminated one's existence among the gods, whether these belong to the sphere of sense-desire, or the sphere of form, or the formless sphere, one is turned over to just this middle region in Jambudvipa. For in the border countries are only a few beings with a good knowledge of the arts, of poetry, of mantras, of secret lore, of the standard treatises, of portents, and of the meaning of religion, but in the middle region these are turned to abundance. But any who are turned over to the border regions, these are at least revealed again in the big towns. This is another mark of irreversibility. Furthermore, to an irreversible bodhisattva, it does not occur to ask oneself whether one is irreversible or not. No question about it arises, as one is not uncertain about 